Hi Nature Explorers, this is the first of three videos about invertebrates. Now in today's video we're going to be concentrating on invertebrates that live in the soil, on the ground or on bushes. Now that's things like spiders and slugs and beetles and I want to show you how to find those invertebrates so that you can have a really good look at them. Now you'll need a few things to do that. Now the most important things are a tub like this to put your invertebrates in. Now you could use a, a yoghurt pot with clear sides or a jam jar. Um, just something to put them in so you can have a good look all the way around and they don't escape. Now the other thing I always use when I'm looking at invertebrates is a, a little spoon and a paintbrush. And that's to stop you picking them up directly because invertebrates are very squishable. So what I tend to do is just sort of brush them onto the spoon and then pop them in the pot or if I need to move them around I just do it with the paintbrush. So those are the main things. Now if you've got some other bits it's really handy but not essential. So if you have a magnifying glass um, then they're really good at getting a close look at invertebrates um, and if you can get hold of uh, an ID chart or a book uh, about how to identify invertebrates then that's really handy too. Um, these are done by the Field Studies Council um, and I think these are great nice little fold out guides um, and you can buy those online or if you look in charity shops and things like that you can often pick up um, wildlife guides there okay so this is the basic equipment that you'll need um, so yeah let's get looking so the first method I'm going to show you for finding invertebrates is called tree beating now this is a really simple one and it's for finding invertebrates that live in the branches of trees so essentially what you do is you shake the tree and then you catch whatever falls out of the tree in a sheet or in this case I'm using an umbrella. So I'll just show you how it's done. So you put your sheet or your umbrella out underneath the tree and you give the tree a really, really good shake. Really good shake. Oh. And you can see that things are already falling off into my umbrella. And there it is, tree beating. So um, I'm going to have a look in the umbrella and see what we find, and then I'll, I'll show you our finds. Now the next activity I want to show you is called a mini nature trail and it's designed to help you focus your attention in one place and get you noticing and observing invertebrates. Now what you'll need is a hula hoop and some little flags. Now I've made these out of cocktail sticks and tissue paper and essentially you put your hula hoop on the ground and you mark out little things that you've noticed with your flag. So that can be invertebrates or it might be things like flowers and leaves and plants. I've just done this with my daughter who's three so we've stuck to five things um, but if you've got a, an older child with a, a longer attention span you could do you could do more and you could put numbers on the flags and so just fit it to your child really so let's just have a look at the things that my daughter chose to to pick out so if we start down here um alice found a um a petal that had blown off one of the apple trees so she's put a little flag next to that and then moving along here, there's another flag here, uh, and she spotted some grasses that were flowering, um, so she's decided to mark those. And then at the back, she's found a buttercup, and she wanted to put a flag next to that, so that's what we did. Um, and then over here, um, there's some... Elsa. Oh, Elsa, not Alice. Very important. Um, over here, there's some silverweed, uh, and she liked those because they looked like... Um, Sort of icy leaves which is the sort of leaves that Elsa would like I imagine um, and then the final thing that we've found which is the most exciting um, for me anyway um, is this little caterpillar here and um, I think that it is a ringlet caterpillar um, uh, because ringlets are one of the butterflies that overwinter as caterpillars. Um, some butterflies overwinter as adults, some butterflies overwinter as pupa, um, but ringlets overwinter as caterpillars um, and then they'll pupate a bit later in the summer. 
um, and emerge then. Yeah, and uh, ringlet caterpillars love to feed on grasses, particularly coxfoot, which we've got a lot of in our garden. So I gathered together all these different types of snails just to show you that once you start looking um, you'll notice that there's all sorts of different types of invertebrates. Um, so the snail up in the top left is uh, your classic garden snail so you'll recognise that from your gardens. Um, the snail in the top right just leaving the shot um, is a type of snail called Sepia nemoralis and the stripes on this snail snail shell are really variable so you might find lots of different stripy shells in your garden if you've got this snail um, the snail that is just here just leaving the shot um, that is a specialist snail that lives in wet grasslands um, and it's called such an air putra and it lives in wet grasslands because it's got a really big foot uh, which is a snail's body and it can't quite fit it in its shell properly so it needs to be very careful that it doesn't dry out so it needs to live in wet places and then I don't know the species of the other two snails the smaller snails but I just wanted to include them just to show you how many different types of snails you could find now snails are pretty cool in that they don't have normal biting mouth parts. they have something called a radula which is a very rough tongue which they scrape across the surface of whatever they're eating and grate off parts of, of what they're eating. Now I managed to get I managed to get a film of a snail on my window for you um, and it's really cool because you can see um, the snail's radula so you can see their little mouth rasping across the window and you can also see a hole uh, in the bottom left of the shell and that's what they breathe through as well. So one of the ways to look for invertebrates is to build a trap for them and last night I went out and I built a pitfall trap. Now pitfall traps are designed to catch invertebrates that crawl along the soil surface. So what you need to do is you need to dig a hole and put a cup like this in it. So this is an old yogurt pot but it can be anything that's got kind of smooth shiny sides that invertebrates won't be able to climb up very easily. Um, so you dig your hole, you pop your cup in and make sure that the top of the cup is level with the surface of the soil so that as the invertebrates crawl along they get to the edge of the cup plop, and they fall in. Now when you're setting a trap like this you need to bear in mind that what you are catching um, is a live animal. So if you set it during the day you need to check it every couple of hours and if you put it out overnight you need to check it last thing at night and first thing in the morning because not only could you get invertebrates stuck in there um, but you could also get things like small mammals like voles and shrews and that kind of thing and you really don't want them to get stuck in there and it's not good news for them um, so when you've set your pitfall trap and you've emptied out whatever invertebrates you've caught and you've identified them or, or watched whatever interesting behaviours they're doing you need to make sure that you put all the soil back in the hole um, so you don't end up with a big hole that you can twist your ankle in and the invertebrates that you've caught you need to tip them back into the vegetation very close to where you originally caught them from. Okay so let's just have a look at this trap. This is the trap that I set last night. You can see that I've put a little bit of cardboard over the top of it. Um, this is because I knew it was going to rain so I've supported the cardboard on two bits of wood here so that there's space underneath for the invertebrates to crawl in um, and topple into my trap uh, and then I put the cardboard on top and I weighted it down like that. Right so let's have a look and see what we've caught in our trap. If you dig down into the ground you can find lots more invertebrates. Now a lot of the invertebrates that we find in the soil are either the larvae or the pupae of invertebrates that we're used to seeing crawling around and flying about. Now this here, can you see in the middle, this wriggler is what a lot of people might know as a leather jacket. Um, now 
It is the larvae of, can you guess? It's the larvae of a crane fly or a daddy long legs, um, which you'll probably know. They're those big insects that have really dangly legs and skinny bodies that often come into our houses during the summertime. Um, so crane flies are essentially flies and this leather jacket has got the classic fly larvae layout in that you almost can't decipher which is which end. It's very soft bodied, it's got no legs, nothing like that. Um, so you know it's not a caterpillar because it's got no legs uh, and you know it's not a beetle larvae because it's got no definite head with big biting jaws. This here is a beetle larvae and it's something I found just digging in my garden and you can tell it's a beetle larvae because if you look at the front of it in front of him just get in focus yeah you can tell that he's got a very definite head and he's got proper legs at the front you need to see his legs um whereas fly larvae uh, and caterpillars for that matter don't have those proper bendy legs which this beetle larvae has got so those are all the different ways that you can look for invertebrates and i hope you have fun trying them out now to finish the video i wanted to show you what you can do to encourage invertebrates into your garden now the best thing that you can do is have lots of different plants to create a really varied vegetation structure now i'll show you what i mean so this is one of my flower beds and i've got these patches of bare soil here for invertebrates that like to bask in the sun and warm up in the sun um, and then i've got these low vegetation here that provides continuous ground cover so that's for the invertebrates that like to hide somewhere so they don't dry out and it's also quite good basking as well so what we get on the veronica here is baby bush crickets that like to sit out in the sun and then suddenly need somewhere to hide and then behind that we've got a kind of a low shrub layer as well and so that's where all the invertebrates that we found in our tree beating like to live so that's things like shield bugs and ladybirds and then finally in my flower bed I've got some weeds. Now, I don't pull up my weeds because they're free wild flowers. And because they're native to this country, a lot of the invertebrates that we get in this country like to live on them. So I've got some herb robert here. I've got some cleavers here. And I've also got things like docks and dandelions. And so if you can leave weeds in your garden, then I would recommend that's what you do too. Thanks very much for watching the video and I look forward to seeing pictures of the invertebrates that you found.